look, for, for the first, I don't know, 20 years of my life, I would not have, uh, uh, I would not, I would not have considered leaving my home or, or really being in life without wearing a yarmulke, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Without wearing a kippah, a yarmulke. You had a naughty phase. I, yeah, go no, ahead. I was gonna explain what a keeper is. Yeah. If anyone, oh, yarmulke, keeper, skullcap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Skull yeah. 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 yeah no, but you did it. Yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, and, and like the way I explained it recently to a, to a classmate, it, it would been like if you told me, oh, you know, go to the grocery store, but just just take your yarmulke off, it would feel probably the way it feels to the average person to say, oh, take your pants off. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, you know, you could wear wear, wear your underwear, but take your pants off. Mm-hmm. Like it's just yeah, like yeah. It, it would yeah. be it would be bizarre. Totally. I get that feeling. That yeah. makes sense to mm-hmm. me, right? Yeah, and um, and then and then so this is just my personal journey with 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 wearing a yarmulke, and then and and I pretty much wore it all the time, you know. Um, and then uh, at one point I started working, and I, I worked in a, a, at a financial services firm for a couple of years, and. For a couple of reasons, and uh, you know, based on conversations with like the with my boss there and whatever, I decided to not wear a yarmulke to work. Mm-hmm. Well, and then, so and I didn't, right. and, and and I was fine. I was okay. It was it's all good. And I, you know, people make decisions to wear or not wear their yarmulke. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I moved to Turkey, to Istanbul, Turkey, and I I didn't wear uh, a yarmulke there. Um, and you know why that is is. Is, is an interesting question, but the, the answer really is because no one in the Jewish community does. And, um, and anyway, I probably wouldn't have wanted to also based on my work, cause I wasn't working in, in like a religious capacity. The Jewish community there is pretty secular and I was not working. Is there a safety issue wearing it publicly? Is there, or isn't there, I'm not sure. There's certainly a perceived safety issue and no one does. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you don't want to be the idiot that, right. that, 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 that tries, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm not, hundred percent sure. And that's an interesting question. Like one person to really talk to about this would be, um, the, the Ashkenazi, the chief Ashkenazi rabbi of, of, of Turkey, of Turkey uh, and who's also the Chabad rabbi there. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Rabbi Mendy Chitrick, mm-hmm. uh, who's awesome. He also has a podcast that's Chitrick. really great. Is he um, a Levi Chitrick? Well, whatever. He's probably, this here. <laughs> I'm sure he's really, he's from that, he's from that family. He's from that family. So yeah, yeah, the Chitrick, yeah. Uh, he's great. And, and I, yeah, I, you defer I, to him to explain. No, but and I think I think and he has a lot to say about this also because he now has been traveling um, in other places in the Middle East. So, for example, like in Dubai, it's interesting. You could you can walk around Dubai now wearing yeah. wearing a yarmulke, no problem. Mm-hmm. So can you or can't you in Istanbul now? I'm not sure what the answer that is. But anyway, also I was I, I was not working there in my capacity as a religious Jew. I was yeah. working there as a Jew. Yeah, but not so it's fine. Mm-hmm. And then so coming back to the states afterwards, I also just didn't wear my yarmulke. You got used. To I, got, I totally got used to it. Mm-hmm. It was just, you know. And so when I started graduate school at Northwestern, mm-hmm. I decided I'm not going to wear my yarmulke. And maybe I didn't even make that conscious decision, but it was just like, okay, mm-hmm. now that's like my life or at least right. my professional mm-hmm. life. I just don't do it. But then I started having conversations with people, especially when we talk about identity. And I realized that there's a certain, t- there, there are like these shared assumptions that people have. Um, so for example, even, and one person even said this to me, like very, very explicitly after I, I don't even remember the context of the conversation exactly, but they said, Oh, and you could understand this as a white man. And I was like, Whoa, wait one second. So like I grew up, um, you know, I'm like, like, no, I I grew up as a woman. (laughs) No, I'm like, no, the whole thing was you never identified as that. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I grew up in Matisdorf in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, and you know, and, um, in like an ultra orthodox, uh, you know, environment. Did they say you couldn't understand this or you could understand? No, I, they 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 were saying I could, they were saying like, 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 like like as a, as a white man, you Mm -hmm. can understand X. And I'm, I'm like, what about my like I'm, I'm like I remember, it, I uh, it, like the thoughts were just going and going and going, and again, this is distinct from white privilege, and you know we could talk about that. That that's that's a different uh, thing. topic, but that's kind that's of what a, they meant, though, no? Not, I don't think so. Okay, more, I, I, maybe I don't think so. Something. More, more, more of like an identity, yeah, you know, thing. But I realized like that is absolutely not my identity, mm-hmm. and and while my parents, I mean. You know, is what is certainly white, Mm -hmm. Jewish, white, whatever. Yeah. I I also realized that if truly my identity is like Jew, and that is my identity very much, I was like, and if I'm comfortable doing so, 
I'm going to put on a symbol more purposely that's going to tell people Jew is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I decided that I'm going to wear a yarmulke. I, uh, well, I've been struggling with the same issue because um, I've hmm. never taken it off until I started doing more edgier comedy stuff. Uh -huh. and then but the, you, would perform, you wouldn't perform in it, would you? Always. Really? Yeah. Would, would you sometimes perform wear a music? hat? Yeah. You perform okay. music in it. Yeah. But either, either, either your head, either your no head was either. always covered. Yeah. Huh. With the exception, mm -hmm. photo shoot, okay. anything that could circulate that could potentially be misrepresented. If I went to a red carpet, which I did once and once, not like on a regular basis, but I didn't want to be photographed and look to be looked compromised. Somebody grabs me in a certain way and takes a photo. And it's like, I didn't want that, which would be out of my control. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't doing content on social media at the time anyway. So it was just like, I had it in my control and I felt, never felt a reason to take it off. Like you said, <coughs> it was like a, a, my, it was part of, it was such a ingrained in the identity. Like to take it off felt much more like a statement than to leave it on. If, if anything, right? Yeah. Like, uh, walking around with it was so second nature to me. Then I started doing some stuff like uh, videos that were more risque and more edgy. And we talked about this in our episode with with a rabbi about it. And just how like I was, I do struggle with this idea of like I don't want, I don't, I, I'm not going to say risque edges of wearing a, wearing a yarmulke because that yeah. feels not respectful. Yeah. And I I wanted to have deference like respect to it as a symbol or whatever. And then it begs the question, well, then why are you saying, eh, eh, you know, so I have to, so in that, I, I would take it off out of, out of respect. And then if I'm performing jokes and things like that, that are more risque and edgy mm -hmm. and I'm not going to wear a keeper while doing that. So that kind of pushed it off. But then what happens was I started to get used to not wearing it, which I yeah. did not like. And I'm like, then I caught myself on a podcast, just not, not wearing a yarmulke, which I always do, do wear generally. And I'm like, well, why? What am I, what am I, what's going on now? Like what happens is you just get used to not wearing it and yeah. then it's just like not there as much and I didn't like that so have to figure it out and the compromise is just like wear some kind of head cover when I perform in any capacity and yeah. just do that even though I want to you're yeah. fabulous fabulous yeah, head head. Hair. yeah. yeah I didn't on. wear one at all until okay. I started until I started losing my hair oh and then it just no I'm just joking I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, well I had this I've, I've had the same thing with my beard recently yeah um I had I had a big beard and I wear a kippah so like yeah, um beautiful bushy like beard. Pe people think <laughs> I'm Chabad in Tinec mm -hmm. um like I remember seeing a Chabad guy walk into shul and I thought to myself like like oh that's like um you're Chabad passing yeah, I was like, oh, that guy's Chabad. And then, and then I was like, oh, I look exactly like that guy. Like, there's no <laughs> difference between us. People must think. But so when, like, I go to weddings or something, like, women wouldn't touch me and they wouldn't hug me and they wouldn't offer to hug me. Oh, uh, must have been hard. Um, which, which, <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't we go to weddings? Because hey, I would go there just looking more modern orthodox and it was a party. Yeah, it's like, why don't I even go That's to funny. these things if I'm not going to get hugs? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then I shaved my beard and then, like, oh, and you very quickly, getting like, something. Um, like um, you know, like just people just make all like all these. Yeah, how they respond sometimes. to you? Yeah, and, I, and I, I was like, oh, like that, like you just assume it's okay to like do it, you know, to to grab my hand or whatever. Uh -huh. um, but then it's kind of like, sure, like you're yeah. you're I, you are you're not wearing that symbol. One of the um, things I, I hated, I, I noticed it in being out without a yarmulke or a head covering. One of the things I hated was like having to go out of my way to explain to somebody. Oh yeah, I'm actually like. I'm not just like Jewish by by default. Like I'm actually very Jewish. Oh, what yes. do you mean? Oh, I'm actually like Orthodox. Oh, what do you? Because like they say, I'll come Friday. And like, but with the kippa, you, it it invites a conversation that I'm happy it to does. have. It does. And I and I'm like, why do I have to like backtrack right. and explain this? Like, mm -hmm. so it's so we it felt so unfamiliar to me to have to do. You that. know, back to the Ben Shapiro thing though. Like, um, but like especially like no like when, when you're doing comedy, yeah. Like it's it really is inappropriate to make like dirty sexually explicit jokes on stage with a yarmulke. What? Um, it is. It is. <laughs> It it sh I I don't think it should be. Maybe I maybe I'm saying that with certainty, um, but I have to think about it. Yeah, me I I don't think it I don't think it should be. Um, I don't know. I I let, we should talk about it. We should yeah. talk about why that is. You know but, what? But but what I was gonna say is I don't think there's much difference between that and what Ben Shapiro is doing publicly of sort of making like yeah hateful We've combative it. statements in public is like that's not like a Jewish value to to be combative and and sort of like. Not understanding and not listening and and like. Th do you think Ben Shapiro? Do you make. think Ben Shapiro gets up and says, "I'm going to be hateful"? Um, like, be honest. 
Well, he, I mean, if he, if he's gonna do it in his keeper, I think he should. One second, think about here's my it. question yeah. though. Yeah. So, are but, you saying yeah. that when at, when you're wearing when one is wearing a keeper, yeah. they must act fully in accordance so, to? So, I mean, I think we're humans, and like ha- having these sexually explicit ideas and jokes is human. And mm. so, when you're wearing a keeper, you should be able to be human. But th- there's a difference between like ma- like making a performance out of it, I guess. And and just having a conversation yeah. like I like I went to grad school and I didn't didn't wear my keeper because yeah. I remember we'd be in these art classes and like someone would show like a naked thing and people would kind of like look at me like is he okay with that and I'd mm. be like yeah I'm like or like I'm in a writing class and like I want to write whatever I want I don't want you to look at me like I'm I can't share or you can't share with me in but school settings it in was school, very isolating but it's different actually. than being on stage when I found when I was in school it was much yeah. more isolating because mm-hmm. people were like are you like normal like us it definitely othered me in a lot of ways it does and, yeah, and, 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 and I guess to prove yes. yourself you could be like I'm yeah. sorry sorry I don't know is yeah. it okay that I said that around you I right. think, are you like pious I think part of that yeah right like, no I'm, I'm an pious animal. Animal. I don't know if this <laughs> resonates for you but mm-hmm. for me I know that part of that has to do with my own self confidence and 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 just being comfortable in my in my own skin mm-hmm. and i know that white certainly- skin <laughs> and, yeah. and I know that certainly um, there, there, your white male skin. Yeah, that certainly there, certainly there were times, and there, and maybe there will be times in the future. This is the funny thing. Like I know for myself that I could come on Buckle Up again mm-hmm. at some point. I'm already trying to get in at a second invite. You know, I want to repeat. I want to mm-hmm. repeat yeah. guest status. We'll see what the numbers are for uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, right. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I might rethink this whole thing and, and say, like, I, I, maybe I'll come on next one without my yarmulke. I'll be like, no, actually. I'm dressed like a nun. I just no. felt like, <laughs> like, 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 nah, like, well, I do want to get, yeah, yeah. But, 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 um, but I know that for me, it's, it's a comfort thing. And like, so, I, I totally resonated with it, what you were saying before of like, oh, going to a wedding, you know, and not getting a hug, even though that's something you want to do and you're comfortable doing. And like for you, like that's what, but just because you have a, like a big it's beard. the only and like, action oh, no, he gets. Yeah. Rabbi Michael, you know, over here uh, <laughs> right, 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 has, right. You know, has, has walked into the building and I get it. And what I have decided even right now, so in, in LA, let's say I'm eating uh, at a non-kosher restaurant, um, you know, with a with a with a colleague, with a classmate, mm-hmm. um, right? That's also, and yeah. and 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 so so. Here's the question: Do I take off my yarmulke or not? Right. And in the past, my answer would have been absolutely. Mm-hmm. And now my answer is no. Mm-hmm. I will keep my yarmulke on, and I will go and eat at a non kosher restaurant. Personally, I don't eat non kosher mm-hmm. meat, so mm-hmm. that's fine. And I don't I don't feel like the the things that I'm eating there are not kosher, right? But but. I'm fine going there. Now, there is this concept in yes. Judaism called marita ayin, yeah. maris ayin, which maris is... Maris ayin, pronounce it correctly, right? maris ayin. Which means that you shouldn't do things that if someone else sees you, yes. they, they will think that you're doing something wrong. Or that's okay for them to do. Or, that's or, the okay. issue. Or that's totally, how I think about that it's it. okay for them to... So yeah. Like, my, my, Somebody might think, oh, I guess the restaurant's kosher. Yeah, that's what... The, in the, other words, I, came actually, up, I figured out the answer. Three, two, one, rocks, paper, scissors, <laughs> talks, rocks, paper, scissors... <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, 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 Michael. <laughs> we had something good going on. No, well, yeah. I, I, I was eating in a restaurant yeah. um, that I, we later found out is, is questionably not kosher. We would like eat meat there. And we heard a story about someone who li- literally, they thought it was not kosher. They saw me in the restaurant and called their friend and said, oh, I didn't know this place was kosher. I don't know. But you know what? I'm like, th- that person that don't make a decision like that about yeah. where to eat. Come on, but, uh, take some but, take but, some responsibility. I think I, I maybe totally. Like that. Correct me if I'm really? wrong. Really? Yeah. You're like, oh, that guy's that guy that guy's wearing a kippah, and he but, is you know stealing from the government. So I go, I'm sure I could do no, that. No, but totally. This goes it's to specifically the, with the restaurants. Okay, restaurants. But this okay. goes to the foundation <laughs> right. a little bit of what it means to be an individual and also part of a community. Okay, so the community thing. Interesting. So yeah, I, I I figured out an answer in t- in talking this out. Yeah, wearing a kippah on stage, making a jokes that. Uh, maybe inappropriate that are inappropriate or in a certain context that are risque, edgy, sexual, whatever. You will be perceived as representing. You when you're wearing a yarmulke, you are a representative now right. of what. Of, and I know maybe you're trying to challenge that or push that when you're going to a restaurant, putting on a keeper that's not a kosher restaurant, but you're saying, I'm I'm trying to expand this perception of what what a Jew is, and it doesn't always have to be in the comments of we only are at these specific places in these specific times, and. 
I can be out in the world in a much more open way and engage with it in a more open way. So maybe that's the case for wearing the yarmulke on stage and doing dirty jokes. But what I'm saying is there is this <coughs> there is this uh, give and take, this struggle between I'm up there just as myself and myself wears a kippa. But when people see you, they see a Jew amongst yeah. uh, as representative of oh, oh he's well, a Jewish no, comedian. Not just, not he's just an Orthodox, a Jew, comedian. not just a Jew, a modern Orthodox. Jew. Yeah, a religious Jew. Some it's, like, it's, it's, uh, from it's, a small community, from a small part of the world. It makes a bigger statement than I intend. Almost now, different than like wearing a velvet black a velvet yarmulke yeah. would be different yes. than like. I, I think I, th- I think personally, a pass through guy, like a knitted a knitted. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this though. Yeah. Yeah. What, whereas taking off a keep a yarmulke off of my head makes a bigger statement for me personally than I intended to. Wearing one makes a bigger statement for other people than I intended. to. Look, I I'm, I'm I think ver- that's the best I'm, way to describe I'm, it. I'm totally sympathetic to you all know? this, and I I don't even disagree. Like I yeah. I get it, and that's yeah. why I also think it's a it's a personal. I'm not criticizing you by yeah. the way. No, I, I don't. I, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't. Does that I really motivate you? Totally, the idea of expanding the perception of what Jews are out in the world. A little bit, you know. I I. I was actually motivated by by um, something I by someone that I saw at actually I was taking a class at Kellogg at the business school at Northwestern, mm. and one of the most popular professors at Kellogg is uh, a man of of a Sikh or a Sikh I don't know how you pronounce yeah. Sikh uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, faith or, mm-hmm. or tradition I don't, I don't know I don't Sikh right yeah. uh, um, and uh, turban and he wears a big turban mm-hmm. carries a knife. Dagger. No, not quite. You know like they that. do that. They, they might. He might. No, oh, maybe he does. Like under, carry oh, yeah? knives, so uh, I don't know. Not anyway. necessarily out in the open. And he so he's self defense. He was like wearing, a religious tenet in Sikhism or something, and they have a dagger that they carry. And I saw. I saw him. I saw him walking around Kellogg, which is like you know to me. I mean, which is you know it's all, it's an awesome place. It's Expressed. also like it's also like the epitome of like corporate America. It's it's an American institution. Mm-hmm. It's a very um, you know well respected business school. There's a lot of business schools named Kellogg. By the way, is there is there more than one? I don't know if there's more than one. But anyway, um, no. uh, um, I made that up. There's <laughs> an old professor at Berkeley, I think, who taught music business named Kellogg, and I oh. glitched that in my head. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, anyway, um, back to the seek. So he. I'm sorry about it. What? I'm sorry about it. <laughs> no. So he. I'm, I'm crushing. So, it. You're so coughing like a beast. <laughs> this, I saw I saw this person walking around walking around the business school yeah. with his big turban. Yes. You know, uh, and um, and totally like comfortable mm-hmm. with himself yeah. and mm-hmm. engaged and friendly with students and like there and i was like why is this person walking around so proud with their head covering mm-hmm. and i'm embarrassed to put on a yarmulke you know but it's so much cooler like if you had a it turban, is cool you might it is actually cool. wear a turban it is totally cool you know? <laughs> okay yeah. maybe that okay would but that, be, would that to, be a cultural appropriate no, to, yeah. to, to no, an like, to an outsider it's all it's all no, different but, but and honestly, exotic I, to us to him, it's like whatever. I, I feel better yeah. walking around with a big beard and a black sort of like Chabadi kippah than I do like what I feel like. Maybe is we just think we're vanilla. With, with a thing. No, because it's like, because it is, it's more of like an identity. Like I'm doing something. The the modern Orthodox kippah is a weird thing. It's like, especially like like around Teaneck, you see these kids who are like, like crazy haircuts, mesh shorts, like insane shoes with like a tiny little thing on their head. And so, you're like, but you like, think, why are you even wearing I want, it? I want, you like, think to I somebody to who you. is an onlooker from the outside, they see that and they right. go, well, that's interesting. I'm sure <laughs> they do. I'm sure, it. no, I'm sure they do. I don't think they see the difference. No, no, no. no I'm saying it's, yeah. it's a hard, it's a hard, uh, like accoutrement yeah. to, to wear. I don't, I don't even know. I just wanted so, to say so, that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a hard thing to do compared to, uh. It's compared to a turban because yeah. it's so much it's it's stranger in a way to be like I look exactly like you except for this little thing. little, little tiny thing yeah. that's my I'm, it's my I'm like I'm in it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah. so it's so, confusing yeah well okay you're I I, I hear it mm. um I totally hear it it's interesting there uh, I'm just talking about my no I get it and I totally get it I I think that uh, two like two <laughs> things for, first like. Not only modern Orthodox Jews wear like knitted kippot, like that's something that I, I think that when we part of being uh, a Orthodox Jew, certainly and a modern Orthodox Jew is also a statement of being in a community mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. I mean, it could be a theological statement, obviously, uh, and, and it's a, a statement on many fronts. But a lot of times it's also a statement of, like you said, you know, I'm, I'm part of something. Um but the the truth is there are I, I think that there are also other Jews. There are certainly Jews in the conservative movement, in the reform movement, who are also wearing uh, kippas rugas, um, mm. uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I think even more importantly, 
there's this line that uh, actually our friend Ari Schwartzberg and I we learned this line together. Oh, um, a shout out by of shout outs right there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so Ari and I were attending a lecture by uh, by by this guy, um, a really phenomenal Jewish academic named Moshe Halbertel, mm. and um, he threw out this line that he quoted from Sigmund Freud. Now I never saw this inside, but I believe it. And mm. he talked about um, he talked about the um, you know, of course, after saying all of these names, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna botch the line. But he talked about basically the, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, uh, he talked about small differences and the discrepancy. No, not the discrepancy. What, what's another word for like being like distinction? Like being prideful, like the. Um, In a bad way or a good way? No, like 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 if I'm like f- like someone Follow that's myself? like f- dignity. dignity? Yeah, oh, like, like like the arrogance of small differences. No, yeah. what's the oh, line? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the soft big no, oh, not man. dignity of difference. No, not the no, dignity of difference. Dignity that sacks. The yeah. Jonathan the sacks. of small difference. I think I wrote it down at one point. So I'm gonna check my notes. The, Is that like a faux pas to do that? No, no. To check my no, notes. J- Jamie. <laughs> just, Jamie. Yeah, we need our Jamie. Yeah, the something well, something's available. The something of small differences. I know. Ben no, he never. He didn't respond to the, my story that I tagged him in. What was that asshole? <laughs> the n- I offered okay. him a job. I feel like I need. I feel like I need to start this again. Yeah. The narcissism of small differences. Uh, right. Sigmund okay. Freud talks about the narcissism of small, of small differences. Explain that. And and so I I think it's that at least my takeaway of mm-hmm. of what that means is there are these small differences that we kind of pick up on and we we think that they're like we're so important because mm. or you know because we are that so i think about that for example when it comes to like my own upbringing mm. so i grew up in an ultra orthodox uh, world mm-hmm. an ultra orthodox community in jerusalem mm-hmm. right most of my childhood age 6 to 13 i lived in israel right mm-hmm. so oftentimes i tell that to people and they say oh ultra orthodox jews you mean like mea she'arim? And my response used to be, no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> and then the older I got, the more I realized like, okay, it wasn't that, but like, is it that different? Mm. And then, so like what you were saying before, like, okay, like Teaneck, which is a modern Orthodox community and like, let's say Muncie or parts of Muncie, like where my parents live, yeah. they're different because one's modern Orthodox and one's Orthodox. Orthodox. <laughs> they're very different. But are they that different? And then, and you kind of, you could kind of keep on expanding in that way. And you realize that actually these like little differences that we think are because we we're in them and yeah. we think they're so significant, certainly to an outsider. Yeah. No, it's, it's not but that's I'm like, like sibling. I'm not talking about an outsider. I'm talking about for you to oh, put for it For me on. personally. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, but that's also it, like sibling rivalry. Like we don't get into it with strangers. Like these communities are all siblings of each other because they're adjacent in a way. So you feel this need to like. Distinguish yeah, yourself. Yeah, to talk about the differences. Sorry, anyway, sorry. No, yeah. no, I mean, I, I yeah. just, I understand for from my own experience of like at a certain point, especially in college, it was like, mm. it was like, um, like it, it felt more like it, it felt more insincere to have my keeper on because I'm like mm-hmm. this, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not representing this and I don't even care. And, yeah. Um, and, and that's kind so, of it. So for me to put it on and off like um, is, it, it's so easy to take it on and off also. When you're, by the way, I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. I, but I agree. I, I feel the same way is, is, and, and, and that's why, um, like I, I will end up taking off my yarmulke sometimes. And, mm-hmm. and what I told Ruthie, my wife is that, um, when it feels more just authentic and sincere to me, and when I'm just more comfortable without it, I'm just not going to wear it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to also make an effort to wear it yeah. when I can. But, but I'm, I'm with you yeah. at the end of the day, like, I think it's just important to like go about and like be a person in the world where you are feeling comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also part of what authentic means. Mm-hmm. And so if it means wearing a yarmulke, great. If not, I, I have a friend okay who, um, who like wears it all around. He lives in New Hampshire and he wears it all around. And, um, and I always think about like for him, for him, it's one thing. I, I can't imagine how many people on a yearly basis see him from a distance, see his yarmulke from a distance who have no amount of Judaism in their life. And like they keep, they light the candles or something like it, 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 it like not, not even just for you to wear your kippah, but like someone else sees you being comfortable in it and it like could change their whole life. It could change yeah. their whole week. It could change yeah. their whole year. 